Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another VectorMade tutorial. I was on one of my Facebook groups the other day and somebody asked me questions about artboards and so I thought let's just jump in and kind of talk about why they're necessary and how we can update them. Um, there are a few different ways to do the exact same thing so I'll just kind of go over the way I like to uh, make changes to my artboards um, but feel free to try out some other ways to do it because like I said there are uh, a couple different ways to do the exact same thing. So let's jump on in. All right, with this, uh, this is a, a new document uh, window. You just go File New, um, and this will pop up. Um, if you want like a preset, you can click on Mobile, Web, Print, Film and Video, etc., and it will have all these presets in front of you. Letter, A4, Legal, Tabloid, um, Web, Web Large, Common, that kind of stuff. Um, you've even got like little templates under here if you want to mess with some of those. Sometimes these can be nice just to start with with something. Um, but I don't usually mess with that stuff. Um, and I do a lot of print. So I do my print in inches. So let's just say we were going to create a um, business card layout uh, front and back. Well, the standard size is three and a half inches by two inches. The orientation is going to be like this. Unless... You wanted to have it, uh, you know, be a, a, a vertical setting, then you just do that. It'll automatically change the width and height settings that you inputted. But we'll just go with kind of standard layout, and we'll bump this up to two. You can also manually change that if you want to. And then we'll click this up once, which gives us 0.125. It's one eighth bleeds, and you want those to be consistent on all sides. So that make sure this is checked or just make sure all th four of these uh, have the exact same values in them. Every now and then you might need to change that, but most of the time these are all gonna be consistent. Um, CMYK is the color mode that we want. Raster effects high, typically on smaller prints. Um, you're gonna keep this pretty high unless it's you know a, a huge wall graphic or maybe like a car wrap or something where 300 PPI is just not as important. Um, and if it's web, you can go to 72. But for print, 300. So let's click Create. And boom, we get two artboards, one and two. Now, if you want to make changes to this, if, um, if you don't have anything selected, which I currently have nothing selected, this should be at the top. Um, it says Document Setup. You can click on it. And it will give you the units, the bleeds, and then this edit artboard tab. If you're just going to make some quick uh, changes to the bleed, let's say 0.25, you know, so a quarter inch bleeds. Boom, you can see this red line bumped out. So the artboard itself stayed the same, but the bleed extended out to a quarter inch. That's a quick way to change that. If, let me put something out here real quick. I'll just do that. If you've got something else selected, this is this is going to change up top. It's going to give you options for this rounded rectangle. But all you have to do is go File, Document Setup, and it's going to pull up that exact same uh, pop-up window. So it doesn't have to be up here at the top. I just end up using it for convenience sake a lot of the time because it's fewer clicks. But um, you get all the same properties here. You can bump that back down to a, uh, an eighth of an inch and hit OK. See, that came back in. Let's uh, click off again, and then this option pops up. I'll go right back. You can click Edit Artboards inside of here, and it will um, select the first artboard and give you these uh, dragging um, squares so that you could drag the corner or the edge, what have you, and make changes to that. Or you can come up here and input specifics. So maybe we know that this business card is going to be 4 by one, which is really weird, but let's just say it is. You can put those those two values in here, four inches wide, one inch tall. That'd probably be more like a name tag or something. But um, but yeah, you can make these whatever you need them to be. And um, you can click and drag and move the artboard. And one thing it will do when you move it is if there's any object inside of that artboard, it's going to move with it. Okay, so you click and drag, it moved it with it, right? And if you have artboards that are overlapping, like this object is slightly inside of this artboard and that artboard, right? But if I click and drag this artboard, I'm going to take this object with me. See? So be careful when you're doing that because you might have objects that overlap somewhat. 
and it might be like hidden in a clipping mask or something of that nature. So just be careful that like when you move an artboard that you only that you have all of the objects in that artboard and you're not stealing from somewhere else. If you are, you just need to create a little more space between your artboards so that that doesn't happen. Um, if you want to make an artboard that goes around an object, so like this object here, um, you know, let's just, let's make it a nice even two inches by two inches, right? I just came up here and changed the values. So it's a two inch by two inch rounded square. Um, if I wanted my artboard to, instead of be this four by one, to be this two by two, I would, I could go to this artboard tool over here and artboard one is going to be selected and I can click once to create a new artboard or I can kind of double click and it will take the artboard one and replace it. So remember, like you click once, it's going to create a new artboard, which again, we'd, we'd have that problem of this object is overlapping two different artboards, right? Um, or we can double click and get rid of that artboard and replace it. So that's a very helpful tip. Remember that one. Um, and why we would want to do this. What's the point? I, I think that's what the Facebook um, friend of mine said. He, he wasn't quite sure what this was doing in that place and it didn't fit with his art that he had created anyway. Um, but I'd like to show you an example of how I've used this. So I did this the other day, created this plane quite a while ago, and then uh, made some updates to these um, little additions that go on the plane. And as you can see, I've made several artboards over here. Well, this one is an eight and a half by 11 um, with everything that they wanted changed to it. So they wanted to have a few things removed, but they wanted the option to be able to put those back in should they require them later. Um, so what I did was I made all these different radomes and pieces on this plane in separate artboard files like this. Um, so that like later they could come in and say, oh, we want to add that radome back here. We want to put this one over here and this one needs to go on the underside and this one's over here and that sort of thing. And then they could place these as they need and move them around and let's maybe put that one to the front or something. So anyway, that, uh, that was the goal so that they could kind of do this on their own, but at this size, at the same size that it was in this eight and a half by 11. So all the pieces are identical to what they were, um, when they were in this piece. So I, you know, to do that, I, I just created individual objects here that are not grouped. These, this is all grouped right here. I wanted the entire plane to go as one piece. So I grouped everything and then made an artboard around it. Now, if I ungroup this real quick, I'll show you. Let's see what that did. Yeah. If I take this artboard and replace it by double clicking, it's going to create an artboard around this object, right? So it's just one object inside of uh, multiple objects that make up the plane, but they're ungrouped right now. So every time I click a new artboard piece, it's going to take the bounds of whatever object I just clicked on, right? Which can be helpful at times. Obviously I needed to do that for this right here and these pieces here, but I didn't want to do it for this entire plane. I wanted to be able to have this all as one piece. So if you want that, you need to make sure that your object or objects are grouped, right? So control G, you can right click G, and then when you click and drag, it should all move as one piece, right? So if we come back here, if I want to delete an artboard, I just, while it's selected, it's got these uh, dashed lines, just hit delete, it will get rid of it. You can click on this one, hit delete, click on this one, hit delete. I can then click on this, it will create a new artboard that goes all the way around, see? Um, so there, you do that, and the reason you want to do that is so that you can export out all of your artboards as the final product. So in this case, I did several different versions. I did PDF and PNG files for my client. And let me just click and drag this over and show you what that looks like. Um, the finished thing was were these two folders right here, where I created PDF folders of all the different artboards and then uh, a 1x, which is gonna be just one times whatever the artboard size is, 1x, uh, of all of the pieces as well as PNG files. So you can see each of these exported out as its own PNG file. So, and how you do that is you're gonna go file, export, 
export for screens and that will pop up every artboard that you have created at the size that you created it, right? So this is my original eight and a half by 11 as they wanted it. And then these are all the other pieces individually broken up. And if you don't want one to export out, you can just uncheck it like this, right? So say you only wanted these three. Okay, there you go. Well, let's check those back. You would click on this to determine where you're gonna place your uh, artwork. So just like wherever you wanna have it, probably in my customer folder somewhere. Um, it's gonna export those. You wanna make sure that it's create subfolders is on um, and it's gonna base this on scale. So, um, so I've got 1X, 2X, 3X, and 4X. That means that there are gonna be five folders here, one for the PDF, one for 1X PNG, 2X PNG, and so on. And if you add different scales, so let's say, let's do 1X and make it a JPEG 100, which is the highest quality. Um, that's also gonna show up in the 1X folder. So it, it, these subfolders are based on scale. So just remember that. Um, but it's great when you export these out, like I said, you get these nice little neat um, folders set up, just like I showed you earlier. And it just makes your life so much easier than having to do all of this individually. Uh, you can create hundreds of files and file types in just a matter of seconds. It's wonderful. So that's the point of having the artboards. It's, um, you know, exporting out for print, you know, if you want to have a bleed. So for instance, let's do this real quick. I'll show you. Um, let's say we wanted black, a black square and it needs to have a bleed on it. Um, if I save this as a PDF, Let's just say black square, boom. I've got some presets in here and um, what you wanna do with these is, I've got a preset called press quality with bleeds where I went ahead and added some marks. I like to add these trim marks and use the document bleed settings and I saved as a PDF. Now, if we go and look at that black square, this is what it's gonna look like. See, this is telling the printer where to cut this is the trim line on this axis and the trim line on this axis, on this side. Same thing over here and over here. So the finished product should be a square that's about here to here to here to here. And this will, extra will be the bleed. So that's why you wanna have artboards. That's why you wanna pay attention to your bleeds, etc. Guys, that was my tutorial on artboards. Uh, please leave uh, comments down below letting me know what you thought of that. If you have any questions, um, if you liked it or didn't like it, um, hit that like button. If you did like it, go ahead and subscribe. If you're not a subscriber already, I'm really gaining some traction with my subscribers, but need to keep uh, bringing in more people so I can uh, get to be a legitimate YouTube channel again. Um, let me know what you guys would like to see in the future. I'd love to have some suggestions from you. All right. Peace out.